interesting article about influencers suffering during the whole lockdown which is maybe um it's a little bit uh hyperbolic i think it's from wired and they're saying the influencer economy hurtles towards its first recession right let's get me get it down on here get this off and put this on the screen so you guys can see it so this is an article from wired uh i might quickly read it here but again i think it's a bit hyperbolic but it says uh, faced with pandemic on one hand and slash budgets on the other some industry outsiders say that it's time for influencers to evolve right which is whatever um I'd say before even reading it, I'd say influencers are recession-proof, or they should be, in fact, because, you know, part of the reason why they work so well is because they have direct relationship to their customer base and customers actually trust them, right? Or the fans trust their opinion on what they have to say, especially the micro-influencers who are like, you know, 100 million or 100,000 followers, to 100 million, 100,000 followers below. Yeah, uh, yeah, and below. Those guys are the one, guys, those guys and girls are the ones that are really smashing it because they actually move culture. They actually move the needle. They, they can actually get a product to sell out in minutes, right? More so than a million ones because it's a bit hit and miss. Their audience, you know, you're not sure who's, you're not sure how many people that follow Kylie just follow her because they want to see a bum and all that. You know what I mean? It gets a bit murky. But when you have a hundred thousand and less, you usually have um, most of your audience made up of people who actually give a shit about what you're about, what you stand for, the products you make, the services that you provide. Um, so as long as they're able to be honest with their audience and not lie, right, and not embellish and not, you know, um, hide things whatever it may be um they'll be completely fine it's the ones that who just relied on you know maybe brand deals to get um to become an influencer or where you maybe get flown out to a certain place by uh, a booking company you might get accommodated by a hospitality accumulate company all these things they will suffer more because they are um they are hand tied to those brand deals they don't have any kind of equity on their own um they can't necessarily sell a product they can't really necessarily sell a service or um all they are is essentially like a celebrity that accepts brand deals maybe is that right way to say it um, which is what most people are nowadays unless they have an actual craft or a talent they usually are just they get the celebrity and they use that to get brand deals um most people in love and hip-hop do that same sort of thing right that's where the whole flat tummy tea thing started i'd assume but anyway let's continue it says um the first signs of distress came hot uh, with panic but pos- positivity hope you're all feeling safe and are all at peace hunkered down in your family one influencer wrote paired with a selfie featuring her adorable children in pajamas another post referred to her mini oats a mini oasis sorry a selection of well-kept house plants along with a caption hashtag stay at home the new coronavirus provided an opportunity to reflect to reset to use code rachel for 20 percent off on home fitness classes the influencers carried on with their loungewear sipping with cream coffee modeling a sense of ease in the face of calamity privately though some influencers have rushed have watched with growing sense of dread as the world collapses uh taking their earning potential with it brand deals have dried up sponsored posts have been delayed and the great reckoning is likely to topple the influence industry but now but by now sorry um, it's already too big but the business of influence is going to change if you think about the way an economic reception works some companies survive and some companies don't says angela sites senior director of consumer insights engagement strategy at the agency pg pmg i think that it could be the same thing that happens in the influence industry yeah that, that goes without saying though isn't it? i think there, it's always going to be the case you're always going to get the best people um will be able to maneuver and evolve and adapt you know um to the crisis the ones that aren't who are a bit base and just do it for the clout or just do it for the freebies they're the ones that are going to suffer that is you know it goes without saying and it continues um for years the influence economy has operated in boom times flash marketing budget funded closes of expensive clothes and paid vacations for exotic locals with more americans taking cues from social media about where and what to buy brands has have started to go on in a survey by media kicks and influence marketing industry found that 70 percent of companies spent over half of their marketing budget on influencers which is which is what it should be it should actually be half and half right it should be half of companies spend it on influencers say only 17 spend it on half is crazy that means there's still a big majority of companies that don't give a shit about marketing on, in- on social media which is nutty in it there's so much money left on the table i guess gary was right in that respect as recently as uh, six weeks ago 
One report estimated that influencer marketing will grow to 9.7 billion in 2020. But it's not all mega influencers either. Micro influencers who managed a targeted following of under 100,000 less, like I mentioned, make up the backbone of the industry. Even people with just a few thousand followers can earn thousands, hundreds of dollars for a single sponsored post. It's not hard to earn an income anyway. Um, eight year olds can do it, provided some adult supervision. So of course, I think honestly, I did, like it's probably bad to say if no one actually thinks this is hard when it comes to entertainment industry stuff. But you know, if you hear your favorite musician right is getting a ten point eight million dollar deal somewhere, there is a part of me personally, me, I still think my favorite, my favorite is Drake, for instance, and I heard he got a ten to ten million dollar contract to make this new album. I still think $10 million is way under his value when it comes to him providing art or providing, you know, a sonic soundtrack that's going to, you know, play a part in, you know, an untold amount of people's lives from now until later. You can't really put a number on it, really, can you, right? If he makes one track that gets you through college, that allows you then to go and, you know, meet the love of your life in the workplace that you go, that affects somebody to go and maybe, I don't know, whatever. Everyone's got their little story with the track they have. Can you really put a number in it, right? Like, he's you're, you're, you're his fan forever, so you're essentially going to be ride or die with him until the day that he dies. And even more so, when he dies, you're going to be able to still remember all the good times he provided for you. The record label's going to be able to place his music in various different you know planes whether it's advertising whether it's marketing whether it's sales right he can probably go into another role in a company too there's so many different avenues you can go in so to put a value on it is you know it's a bit of a waste of time so i think sometimes it's in, in social media marketing with mostly in influencer marketing i think a lot of those guys undersell themselves right for the amount of product they can actually move because usually if you're in a position to get attention or if you're in a position to get headhunted by an agency or to be approached by a brand you're usually somebody that's got that they can judge by them actually you've got quite good engagement right people are commenting on your things they're looking at your images they're clicking the links they're liking the stuff you know they give a shit about what you post so the brand when they're approaching you is hoping because you're an expert in your particular field you can take their dreadful product usually and you know tell your fans and give it a chance and that is going to do more for that company than you know spending a million pounds on fucking you know ad banners or on google adwords or whatever it may be right because you know they don't really know what they're doing or they don't really have any brand equity they should be better off building some kind of noise some kind of traction on social and then parlaying that into other paid avenues or other paid you know traditional paid marketing avenues like facebook marketing or facebook ads which you know it's not to say it's a traditional but in that regard that might be a better way to do it so these i get honestly I, I, like i think they're undervalued really so maybe post this you might get a bit of a leveling off where there might be, you know, more of an acknowledgement on both ends, like on the influencer and the brand side, that they maybe should work together to cultivate a relationship, see if it works out, see if it meshes, see if there's any, you know, link synergy between them, and then maybe build up a plan or an execution plan in terms of what they do when they roll it out, their marketing stuff. So just, instead of just sending somebody a brush and telling them to stand in front of a mirror, maybe there's some way that they could do it that would be different to each person. Maybe, I don't know, but... Um, I still think these guys aren't getting paid as much as they should be getting paid. And in many cartoons here, it says, um, as a new coronavirus sends the world hurtling towards a recession, though, more glamorous trappings of the influencer lifestyle have come to halt. Pay trips have no place amid lockdowns, nor do street star photo shoots to model uh, sponsored clothes. And it's not clear that those opportunities will repeat in the future, at least not for everyone. The pandemic is having a major effect, uh, impact sorry, on the overall influence industry. And it's likely to have lasting effects, says Sites, this uh, PMG woman, which of course is true, and it? like it's standard part of course that. For one thing, there's just less money going around. As of March, the market, uh, the market research e-marketer found that about a third influence are already seeing um, fewer collaborations. Some of those may return as the economy rebounds, but other brands will sever their ties with influence who haven't shown they can drive sales, which is what it always should, should be. I think, as per usual, most of these companies just did it shit, right? They did it how they did most marketing avenues, right? Whether it's email with his ad uh, banner ads whatever they just pump money into it and don't necessarily see a value don't really see any kind of return there's no metric set up to judge what works and what doesn't work and you just continue kind of you know following that loop 
so they did it with it. so they, instead of signing you know free people who are really good at what they do in terms of influencer marketing so signing up free you know influencers in general and maybe putting most of you dividing your budget between those three people and going all in they'd rather have a roster of like 25 when really the ones that are bringing the most of value are the top two so it's just a standard um you know lack of preparation awareness and you know judgment from them on that side and it continues even before the pandemic brands were already starting to prioritize longer term collaboration with influencers versus one of partnerships says jasmine einberger senior and it's e-marketer uh, besides the shrinking budget it's also awkward to time to advertise in the first few weeks of quarantine we saw a decline in sponsored posts said sites whose agency brokers deals for brands like sephora and beats by dre there's a seven there's a unsavoriness in hawking a product while record label sorry a record number of people are unemployed or facing life-threatening illnesses and the brands don't want to risk the wrong messaging which is definitely true and i guess for the for the influencers themselves they just don't want to seem yucky to their audience i think most influencers i don't it's different i think youtubers are a different bunch because youtubers seem to be able to get away with murder with their fans and they can literally do what they can be the most horriblest person in the world right they can do some really truly horrendous shitty things and their fans seem to just ride or die with them regardless whereas i think in traditional media or traditional entertainment circles if you do something that is unsavory you usually get outed by the maybe it's different maybe it's different maybe because in hollywood if you get if you do something that people don't like or people don't agree with usually it's the industry that shuns you first and the industry is what people react to so if people shun you in the industry then your general fans will too because they don't want to be tired of your brush they don't want to be i mean so they don't, they don't want to have the kind of you know the mark on their head or the cloud over them whatever it may be but obviously if you're a youtuber you can kind of isolate yourself from that because there is no industry the industry exists on the internet and it's in the comments and if you just don't look at them you're fine um but they tend to get away with murder in that regard so um influencers aren't like that they're not giving that kind of grace i think because it's so you know maybe vapid or usually the people that you encounter who are influencers maybe aren't the best people it kind of gets a bad reputation but it seems like everyone is sort of waiting to to make a mistake so if you do do something that's a bit scummy if you get to put a hashtag ad or sponsored on your post people actually light you up and they don't have any remorse for that so i guess if you're that kind of person you've already got your fair share of stick you don't want any more you know what i mean you're like look let's just revisit these plans when everything kind of opens up again you don't want anyone to give you any sort of hassle so i definitely understand where that's coming from but it goes a bit like this last bit um i had a lot of brand campaigns this woman's site from mentioned saying i had a lot of brand campaigns that were set to go live in march and even early april and those have all been postponed says lauren else a micro influencer with 32,000 instagram floors one of them for a beer company decided against a sponsor post for fear of alienating viewers my income has definitely gone down and you know it is what it is man i think that is um that's okay though i think for the most part i would say if you are an influencer and you're saying you're declining your wages you have to be more aware that in the future if anything does happen again you have to be you know cash rich and have a uh, stockpile of cash especially if you're getting loads of brand deals because i think a lot of people who get those brand deals maybe are looking at it and maybe have adjusted their way of living in part due to the brand deals they're getting but if you're able to kind of get a brand deal and spec out you know how much you need to live with you know because i'm sure if you get paid like 30 grand for a campaign if you're smart you just divide that by 12 months and imagine that's your like full-time salary and anything on top of that you just basically put into your savings you're perfectly fine in it you can live off you know more than 1500 a month i assume um i think that probably is a lesson for all to be learned in terms of you know having some sort of cash supplies that are ready for you to use once you get into an emergency and i also just think you know the ones that are good influencer wise will hang around i think people will still want to hear what they have to say they'll still want recommendations about especially when it comes to um knowing how to navigate a post-corona world right like what do you do like imagine if like um because nowadays we haven't necessarily seen a good response from most governments about or even like a really good detailed plan about what they aim to do in terms of reopening the economy imagine you're an influencer and you're able to pivot and provide stuff that's within your lane don't obviously start talking about you know fucking building hospitals and shit but stuff that's in your lane stuff that's in your warehouse stuff that appeals to your kind of audience if you're able to provide them with some information about i don't know how to safely um unbox uh, some makeup that you order from overseas all that sort of stuff that might go an actual long way so i think some of these guys need to be don't be so glum i think these articles are usually written for like you know people on the sidelines who aren't actually you know doing the stuff themselves but if you are i think i think it's a good time i think it allows you to kind of focus on it a little bit get back to your base be able to answer questions from people 
get personal again um you know get back to the old days just being a bit more scrappy and not relying on all the fancy lights and cameras and you know allowing it time to kind of build your audience re uh, reconnect with your community and again like i said once the gates reopen you can still be there for them to provide them with that extra bit of care the extra bit of attention that they probably don't feel like they're getting from mainstream media that'd be my opinion anyway